Hello guys. So today what we will be doing is uh, we will be entering the data here in this form and we will store it in our database. So here. So for that we need to create one database. So uh, if you have downloaded the workbench then you can just click on this icon the database icon and then we can write it our database name here and just click on apply and apply and finish so that is created we can see it here and let's create a default one so that is not default and we will create a table also so for table we will be needing first name last name mobile telephone address and password fields so for table let's click on right click and create table and our table name so our table name will be login because we will be storing the data of sign up and we will use the same table for logging in the user. For that let's create the columns. First one will be account ID. That should be of integer and auto increment. And then we will be having first name or write it like first name. That should be of what uh, let's take it of 100 and then last name. Last name will be also 100 and then we have first name, last name, and then mobile and telephone. So mobile, mobile, and then telephone, and then address. For address, we will take it of 200 character and then we have password. Password will also be of uh, 100 bits and then confirm password. Let's take it also of 100. So we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 fields. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 fields and then last will be of uh, let's say it, date time. We will take the timestamp here on which date the user has uh, done the sign up. So these will be fields and let's click on apply and apply. So our table is created successfully. We can just click on here and see the table. Uh, like this. Let's remove it. Don't say. So our table is here inside this. So this is our login table now. It's showing the schema database name and login table. So now we have to do a few things. That is, we need to create a database setup for uh, our form. And for that, let's move on to our project here. Let's firstly uh, change this file from HTML to PHP. So for that, let's move on to our project. And this is our HTML file. So just copy the content and paste it in new file and then save it as .php format. You can save it in whatever format you are uh, using, whatever language. So I'm doing it in PHP. So that's why I have said saved in PHP. Now since we have created the PHP, so now we can use this PHP field opening and closing files and inside it we can do whatever we want. So since we will be needing to create a database connection, let's create one more file that is uh, for the database. So for database, we'll be using the PHP file and then let's take database username. Let's take it to root. That is our default and then database password also as blank because our database password is blank database host name will be localhost since we are doing it in local then database name so our database name is that is demo this is our database name so for the database name, let's say it as demo. Then let's create a connection. So let's take a connection variable. You can name it what we want and then MySQL I have. 
MySQL I connect. Let's save it. Uh, let's save it with the name of dpcon.php file. So MySQL I connect will take four parameters. One, two, three, and four. First, first will be db host. Second will be db username. I will see So this um, db username and then db password. And then we have db name. So all these things we have defined here, db name, password, Host and uh, DB username. Yes. So these four are defined. And then if we want, then we can also set up the cat set. So my SQL I set cat set. My SQL I set cat set. And now that let's do it. How do you DF it like this? So our database file is also done. So now we will be using this file to enter our data. So we will just need to include this file wherever we want to fetch or insert any data in our database. So let's include this file. For inclusion, we will be writing like this. Just include and this will take our file name dbcon.php. This is our, the file name, so dbcon.php. And since we have written this file name now, so I guess um, we won't be we won't be storing any data here because we will be uh, doing the post request. So for that, let's create a script file. Let's create a Java a JavaScript and then we will do the storing process. So a script type equals to JavaScript, and then we will be using the jQuery. So we need to import the jQuery as well. So for this, let's move on to Below our title, let's move on to this jQuery and get started. And from here, we will take the CDN then so that we don't need to download it. We will just do this and jQuery is now imported in our project. Now we can use jQuery. So for that jQuery, jQuery, jQuery. It's the syntax, so you need to learn it. Uh, by practicing, you will be used to it. So the function and then function, we will be doing this and that's not the semicolon. And for this, we will be doing form submit. So form submit is done like this. The form tag and then on submit. So on submit. This will be done like this column function here also. And then we will just give it a variable and then here add a semicolon. And now what we will be doing is we will take all these uh, IDs and we will take those values only. So app name, last name, mobile, telephone, address password and confirm password that is one two three four five six seven fields so for the seven fields we will define seven variables so where then variable name equals to dollar of our id so dot value this will be seven times so i'm just pressing control shift and t two three four five six seven and here also, I'm just uh, clicking mouse click and with, uh, with pressing control. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Since I have copied all those seven IDs earlier, so I'll just control D, all those seven are here. 
Similarly for this, I'm just pressing control D. So it will select the same syntax which I have selected once and then control V. So that is done for all the seven fields. Now we will, since we have done this thing, now we will be doing the post request. For post request, we only need to write it like this dollar dot post. And then dollar dot post, we need to write a path that uh, which file will be responsible for uh, inserting our data. So there we need to write it like this. So demo, that is our project folder. That is this, this place. And inside this, we will create one file that should be named as the store.php. And then we will create few parameters, not function. Inside this, uh, no, no. yes, now we will take the key value pairs. So, first name or just copy all these seven. I think that should be copied. Yes, those are already copied. Mm -hmm. So, I will just take this and then with the colon. We'll be just doing this. Okay, let's do it fast. That is done. And now let's pass those variables which we have taken above. Okay. This. this side, uh, on the right side, we have those variables which we have taken uh, taken here. And this will be used on this file, this store.php. So these keys will be used to fetch the values. So that is done. And then let's do the form something and then data. So whatever response we will get, that should be written here. So just simple red alert and inside alert, we will do data. Okay. Yeah, so that is done. So what it will do is, it will take every variable which we have defined for our input fields or number fields, and it will take that variable's value and we will insert it in this. And then we will be passing the value to these variables which will be used in this file. So now since we have done all this, let's create one more file and name it as store.php. Let's save it first store of php now for that we need to do the php of minute log details and we need to include our, our database file that is responsible for making connections so that is dbcon.php dbcon.php And now we will take all those keys. So the keys are here. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we will take all these seven keys and we will just do it like this. Paste. And then we will do like dollar in front of all this because we are using PHP, so we use our dollar for taking the variables. And then for these variables, we will this we will be using dollar underscore post because we use the, we use post method for forms. So that is also done and semicolon. And since in our database we are taking one date time field that is additional one. So let's take it as date time. This side, uh, these variables can be any. So we don't need to take the same variable which we are defining here. So you can see we have here we have first name and I have taken it. So that doesn't matter and that would create any problem. So for our date time, I will just use PHP date time y dash m dash p and h colon i colon s. This will give the timestamp. 
and now for the insertion let's just do insert and try to insert query insert into our table table name is login this login so insert into login and then for login we have first name last name mobile telephone so we need to write it as it is in the same sequence as we have taken in it in our table so first name last name and then we have mobile and telephone address and then password and contact password these names are like all these should match with what we have taken in our table in our database so con password and then date time and then we will do values so for values we will be doing this like this so for values first thing is we need to contact and closing the values and then just semicolon and in between this we will be writing it like in the same sequence first name last name then mobile then telephone then address then password confirm password and date time so all these fields will be taken here and draw the first name dot is used to concat in php so we have for the first name and then we have comma then we have second field that is dollar l name then again we have a comma then the third field that is while then again we have comma so similarly like this that might be a confusing one but uh, we need to do it like this or oh, there is one more way i will show that as well but let's try it like this once. So that is done. And since we need to insert it as well, so we need to write it like this MySQL I query. And in this query, we will write the dollar con. This dollar con should be the same variable which we have defined here dollar con. So you need to take care of this. So dollar pawn and then the dollar insert. Insert is this variable. So it will do the connection and insert our this query. So that is done, I guess. And now if we just say echo and then success. So whatever we will write here. We will just get that in our data and that should get alerted. And since we are doing the form submit, so we need to add the form tags here also. For that, we need to choose it uh, somewhere like inside this. We we'll just close this tag and here we can take form opening and this. So that is the, we have a form and also one more thing that is since we are doing form submit so this won't work this button because it's of input type equals button so for uh, submitting using this button we need to write and hash of submit and then on click so we need to write it like that but since currently we are doing form submit so let's copy that and comment the uh, initial one and there is one more way to define button which i have already told but we will take it here as just input type equals to submit 
and uh, that should be all same. Yes, yes. Now let's move on to our project and click on refresh. Since it's an HTML and we have written all the code in first.php, so let's replace it with first.php and press it. You can see there is no change. Let's also uh, open our console so that in case, yeah, so we have one error, I guess. First name dot php line 67 and expected identifier L name line 67. Yes, th this is a genuine problem because we haven't added a comma. Now, if we save and refresh, yeah, that error is on. So now, uh, if I enter the data here, so like my name. And any number in and code is address, and then password is just one, two, three, four, five, six. And for confirm password, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if I press enter, so that has thrown error unexpected double quoted syntax string for store.php so that has shown the error for store.php okay no, not needed for now so for store.php let's move on to our store.php let's take it in simple manner so that should be like this just to add this and this and let's take the values and for the values we will be taking a single course for all of this no need for concatenation anymore first name and similarly last name mobile Telephone address telephone password and return. I guess this should work. Now I got it in. Password and click on sign up. So this hasn't given any return. Let's check on our database. Yes, so the entries uh, entries are inserted because we have taken it as auto increment, so it is one and show with the body and then all these things. It has taken the timestamp also but it didn't return anything okay let's leave it for now and we will debug it and we will we will surely get to know that why it hasn't shown this i i think uh, since our store method has done this work so after that it has surely returned and uh, this must not be executed so that is why it hasn't returned anything so since you can see we have just created a form sign up form and we have entered the information here and we are able to see it here so with the help of core php we have done all this you can use any framework you like like uh, laravel or uh, with the help of django if you want to then you can just do the django so that's done so thank you guys and if you like my video please hit the subscribe button and press the like button as well and uh, please share it with, my, with your friends thank you guys bye